up, Bengal fans? It's your host, Joey Carney. I want to thank you for clicking on this video. It was an amazing experience, and I can't wait for you to see the full interview. Now, if you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below your favorite part at the end of the video. Now, enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, the angle proudly presents the world's most talked about pro wrestling sensation. This is Kevin Owens. It's the Angle Podcast. How exciting! What's up, Angle fans, and welcome to the Angle's WWE Backlash pre-show. I'm your host, Joey Carney, and if you haven't already, please like and subscribe down below to stay up to date with all the Angle's activity right here on YouTube. Now, it is tonight that we welcome back one of the most iconic WWE pay-per-views of all time, and that is WWE Backlash. It is on this pre-show that we'll be discussing all the matches, going over match predictions, where we think storylines will be headed after tonight, where we think the WWE superstars that are involved on the card will be headed after tonight. And of course, I will not be doing that alone. There is an exclusive legendary panel that I put in place to help me do that. These are some of my favorite wrestling podcasters out there today, and I can't wait to share their voices and their perspective with you on this pre-show. Now, throughout the night, we will have some major announcements being made by me and also some familiar faces you may or may not know. I'm going to start off the show in a big, big way with this first huge announcement. Right, ladies and gentlemen, it is official. The Angle Store is live right now at theangleradio.com. It is there we can find designs like this one, the In Your Tap House shirt that pays tribute to the In Your House pay-per-view. Amongst 30 other designs, which were all created by me, I've been waiting to share with you for weeks now. And like I said, it's finally live. Go to the site, check it out. If you see something you like, pick it up, tweet me or DM me at the Angle Radio on Twitter or Instagram. I will share your post and I will send you something personalized from me. I've been waiting, like I said, for weeks to share with you guys. It's really exciting to finally have it happening right now, live at theangleradio.com, the Angle Shop. We are going to start this show off in a big, big way. We're going to check in with one of our fellow analysts, Lil Pocky from the Botch Finish Wrestling Podcast. We're going to head over to the Zoom room right now to get his thoughts on some of the matches he's looking forward to for tonight's. WWE Backlash. What's up, Angle fans? It's Joey Carney here. We are starting this pre-show off in a big, big way. I have an analyst here from the Botch Finish. Welcome, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing really well, Joey. Thanks for that. Um, for everyone watching, I'm the Rocky, the, the Botch Finish podcast. Uh, we had great, great invitation here. Really wanted to collaborate with the Angle. Um, if you don't know, we're about honest conversations about pro wrestling from people you'd want to watch wrestling with and Joey fits that bill. So I'm really happy to be here. Really happy to talk about Backlash. Awesome, man. Now, I do want to discuss some big matches with you, uh, being that you are interested in this pay-per-view amongst a lot of WWE fans, uh, or actually just wrestling fans in general. I want to start off with the Raw Women's Championship, the champion Asuka defending against Nia Jax. What, do you, what are your thoughts across the board what do you want to talk about about this match? Uh, if I'm going to be honest with you, Joey, which is kind of the thing here, um, there, there are a lot of thoughts. First off, let me just address, there is a lot of hate um, towards Nia, or going towards Nia Jax right now, and there's some reasonable you know, uh, motivations behind that. Um, I just want to put out there first that I believe most of that's undeserved. The criticism going Nia's way, botches happen. Things in wrestling happen. Injuries happen. Um, they would not keep putting her in positions where she's working with major talent if they did in indeed feel she was overly unsafe. Now, that being said, there are things that she can do moving forward to avoid the, the label of, of being dangerous in the ring. And that's really where we're at here. So what I'm looking for going into this match, first off, 
Asuka has an audition right now to really see how um, how much we buy her as that champion. Nia's not going to win. I'll get the prediction out of the way. It is going to be an Asuka match, but what I'm more looking forward to or looking to see in that match is to see how well Nia protects Asuka, to see how she's responding to all this criticism, which again, at least in my view, is mostly undeserved. I mean, it is wrestling. Injuries happen. Unfortunately, they seem to have happened a little more often with Nia in the ring, but you know, if there was an issue, the company wouldn't let her be in there. Of course. No, I, I tend to agree with you. And it's not that I'm not a fan of her either. I'm, you know, for her size to be able to do what she does and, you know, compete the way that she does. I mean, she is not just one of these superstars who you see, you know, on main event. She is right. on Raw weekly. She's in main events. She's, you know, in championship matches at pay-per-views, whether it's exactly. you know, with Tamina for a tag title or it's right now against Asuka. Well, well, like it's said, funny you should bring up Tamina because Tamina has that same type of rep, of rep backstage of not always being yeah. the safest worker. Well, I mean, Tamina is where she is in the company, and you would think that if if Nia was cut from the same cloth or had that that same type of feel, that she would also be there. So, um, you know, I'm just wanting to, to give her more of a benefit of the doubt. I think one, she is a fantastic addition to that to the women's division. She is unlike anyone else in the main roster, and you know, given her giving her a little more rope here, I feel is going to be it's going to be worth it. She's going to get there. She's going to improve. Once upon a time, not too long ago, we felt the same way about Braun Strowman being in the ring with a lot of people. You know, I vividly remember a Sami Zayn match where I I felt I felt bad for Sami. Like, I, I felt it through the screen. So, um, I have faith she'll get there. And if you look at cases with Nia, I mean, look what happened with Becky Lynch. It kind of, you know, it helped make Becky Lynch. So, it's not <laughs> yeah, that no, it's, it, you know, it, it is an injury, but it's not all bad. You know, it, no, did, it does help a little bit. Um, it's not, but, and I mean, don't get me wrong. No one ever wants to get injured. But like you said, they, that whole – Becky's broken nose, without it, she doesn't get to the main event of WrestleMania. So uh, ultimately, because they booked it well and there was a story around it and, and all of that, it went to help somebody. And, and that's really, you know, that that's really what you need to do in those situations. You need to make it mean something. You know, you put it in the storyline and you make it work. And you're right. There are a lot of times where somebody disappears for a few weeks or a month or whatnot, comes back, and it's the best thing that's happened in their career. Yeah. And with this match in particular, I think that you're going to see a lot of aggression. Or, yeah, it's going to be a lot of aggression from Nia Jax to put on Asuka. Because Asuka can take it. We've seen her in the ring with the best of the best. I mean, this match with Charlotte Flair on Monday Night, on Monday Night Raw this past week, was really yeah. aggressive. Um, so I think Asuka can take it. And I think Nia being more aggressive uh, kind of puts Asuka over. But I think with such bad feedback right now on Nia, I think that's like, it has to be like reverse psychology where she's going to do what people don't want her to do. Or it seems like people, she's doing what yeah. they don't want her to do to get that real heat. Yeah, no, and, and you're right. I mean, fans right now don't want to see her taking – um, you know, high risk spots with yeah. smaller talent like Kyrie or Oscar. But I mean, at the same time, we don't, we don't get over our hesitation with that unless she does, which is why I go into this match. Like I don't think they're going to pull punches. I, I, I do not think it's going to be a, a dumbed watered down version of the match they wanted. Like I really do think they're going to go for it. And Oscar being the pro that she is, is going to make Nia look great. It's going, it's going to look, and feel so much better because Oscar's one of the best in the world, period. But also, I mean, Nia has something to prove. She's not someone that's deaf to social media and all of this. Like, she knows what people are saying about her, and that does motivate her, you know, bulletin board type stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, with fans and even superstars, I mean, we've seen, you know, uh, I think Ronda Rousey has, you know, said stuff publicly on Twitter. Well, Carmella. Carmella's Car pretty vocal. Carmella is a big one, too. That was a big part of – uh, Total Divas as well, um, with with her with Nia, you know, being too dangerous in the ring and things like that. But I think that, I mean, expect this from Nia, but in a way where it's you know it's uh, she's trained for it is what I'm trying to say. She's going to be trained for this, especially this match. Oscar right now is I think the biggest draw 
in the women's division. Besides, I mean, obviously Charlotte Flair, that's another topic. But uh, Oh, no, it depends on how they use Charlotte. Right now, Oscar definitely has a lot more um, grace built up with the fans, if, if that makes sense. Like, she's – the fans are more ready to see her at the top of the card right now than Charlotte. And even though Charlotte can always be put there. So, um, but, yeah, no, there's, there's a lot of interest going into this match. Yeah. For Nia, that, I don't know, isn't – I'm sorry to put it. It's it may be the most interest going into a Nia match that didn't have a world champion or like didn't have Alexa Bliss in it or wasn't at WrestleMania. Like yep. the interest and entry going into this, while it is somewhat negative because of her her injury history, I mean there are going to be a lot of eyes on her. So there is still a very real chance that she turns some heads and you know if she does it well and she protects Asuka and things go the way that I know they can, that the ladies know they can, that WWE. Yeah knows it can then you know i just i feel like come monday night raw next week we are going to feel differently about nia Jax. i agree i think that I, this is going to be I, I i hope that it's a great match i mean yeah. oscar can put on a great match nia Jax can put on a great match that the fans are really into when it's aggressive we, we've seen it done with her and, and ronda rousey uh we kind of know what to expect though from from nia max matches so i'm not mm-hmm. really like you know too, too, like, oh, you know, it's not going to be great. I think it's going to be a great match. I think this is a, more of a statement piece for both. Like, like, like you said, like, a lot of eyes are on Nia, but this is also a big opportunity for Asuka to look really strong. We have mm-hmm. superstars like Shayna Baszler on the, on the roster. Now the addition of Bianca Belair, who I hope that they, you know, develop more than just what they're doing with her currently. Yeah. There's a lot of star power that they can utilize on Monday Night Raw. Look, you can have Ruby Riot. Imagine a feud, Ruby Riot and Asuka. Although that Ruby's, you know, booked, not so great. But if you do it right, you can have, you know, great matches. Well, and uh, with, with Ruby, at least, it's just a matter of decision-making. As soon as they decide they want to put some steam behind her, the yeah. crowd's going to gonna respond. I mean, she's at that level, and personally, she's, out of everyone you've mentioned, probably the one with the most um, potential on Raw currently. That includes Bianca Belair. Wow. Uh, it's just, for Asuka, it is a pivotal point for her championship. One, Becky Lynch got pregnant, so this wasn't a planned championship. Asuka was the best choice of what was available at the time. Not that she's not deserving, but there is still a contingent of people that want to see her, like, you know, uh, grow into that belt, you know, to really lay claim and statement that this is my championship. So this particular show with this particular uh, opponent is her audition. Like, if this goes well, they get a good match, there's a good crowd reaction, then yeah, we may actually see a longer term Oscar reign. Now, if it doesn't, I'm looking at SummerSlam and I'm looking at Shayna Baszler and I'm looking at Charlotte Flair and I'm thinking, this isn't going to last. Like, like for me, that's what this is, is it's Nia's opportunity to show, one, she's not dangerous and she can put on a match with a great talent without injuring her. And for two, Asuka to prove that she can carry a talent like Nia through that match as champion and have it mean, you know, as much as a championship match should. So it's uh, it's really important, like really important for Oscar Green. It's 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 also really important for like the division too, because this is kind of like you said, it's it's a make or break for everyone involved. Um, I mean, for, I'm, I'm definitely predicting an, an, uh, an Oscar victory. It's it's no doubt in my mind. Yeah, yeah. It's it's at this point, you already see her teasing a a feud with Charlotte Flair that we saw on Monday Night Raw, um, and where does Kyrie go from here? You know, does Kyrie, I mean, you see, it's a typical thing in WWE. There's a tag team. One succeeds, the other one turns. So yeah. can you see a, a turn coming from Kyrie or is she going to come out on set on Sunday and help, you know, maybe help Oscar distract Naya. I mean, there's so many things that can happen. There's, there's definitely some ways you can go in the division and just having Oscar at the top is going to open more like uh, possibilities, you know, for a long time now, the, the women's division on Raw has essentially been Becky Lynch and friends. That's so, you know, this too. is an opportunity to expand out of that. As far yeah. as Kyrie goes, that's a really good question. I mean, Kyrie has so much talent. She is a huge 
star uh, across the world. But as of now, there's not, I mean, she's Oscar light in, in, in a lot of ways, or at least that's how she's viewed. So ultimately, if you ask me what I think they should do with Kyrie, get her away from Oscar. She doesn't have to turn on Oscar. We don't have to have a blow off feud. It's not like that type of relationship, but get her away, put her on a different show. Put her on SmackDown. Yeah. So we yeah. are not going to see Kyrie Sane for what Kyrie Sane should be until she's not standing next to Oscar. Well, look how she was booked in NXT. I mean, Kyrie was the NXT Women's Champion, and yeah. she put on a great show. She had a, she had a great following, like uh, even more so. Eo's the what people turn to now, and rightfully so. Eo's a fantastic talent, really deserving champ, but she didn't get over as a baby face. They brought her in. They tried to stick her with Kairi Sane and do the happy, happy Japanese Kabuki warrior type thing, and it didn't take. Whereas with Kairi Sane, the moment she walked through the door, everyone was in. She was hooked. We yeah. all wanted her to beat Baszler in the finals of the Mae Young. Like, I, she was able to, to immediately garner that type of support from the fans, which is something that Os or Io didn't, and Asuka honestly didn't, at least not initially. Once she got the belt and started that run, everyone got on board, but initially Asuka was still kind of an unknown. Yeah. In that respect, Kyrie has the most potential, like the most crossover appeal, which is why I get her away from Asuka and let her do something different. We also still haven't seen the the peak of Kyrie Sane, sort of say, in WWE. We've seen no, just a little much. bit of what she can do, you know? No, very, very little, especially especially when she was in a tag team. Like, the sad part is the most exposure she's gotten is in that is in the Kabuki Warriors tag team. Yep. And that's that's nowhere near the type of – or it doesn't show the type of talent nearly as well as it should because Kyrie right. Sane is a top-level female talent. She really is. Yep. Well, uh, with this match, I mean, like I like you predicted, you think Asuka is going to take the win. I think Asuka is going to take the win. Do you think if Nia does – lose this match is it a, in a way bury her because she was supposed to be the number one contender regardless if it was not if it was uh oscar with champion or becky the idea the 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 original plan was for uh this upcoming pay-per-view to be becky versus naya for the title so naya wasn't the question it was us it was the it was who's gonna be the champion um, so for this match i mean They've been building up Nia, but then again, they've been building up Nia since before she got injured. If she loses this match clean, she taps out to Asuka, she passes out, does it in her in a way you think bury her from how dominant she's been looking lately? No, not, no. It, I mean, assuming it's not an obvious like squash or something like that, in which case yeah. I complete, uh, yeah, it does. But as long as it's a competitive match, as long as Nia gets moments to look good, and as long as it is a competitive finish, like it that's fine i mean we don't we don't want oscar to lose like really as a fan you shouldn't or at least i i can't generalize for fans as a fan i don't want to see oscar lose yet so what i'm looking for is i'm looking for a good showing from naya i'm looking for good storytelling in the ring and if naya looks strong in the match she looks strong against the women's champion so exactly. it's not being buried assuming they do it well like professionals should yeah, no, I agree. This match is definitely going to be one of the more interesting ones on the card. It's 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 a different, it's a unique situation because we we really we basically know who's going to win. It, I'd be shocked if Nia won, but yeah, I think the world would be. We know who's going to win, but we also know it's going to be an interesting match. And the the measures that it takes after it's done, where you know what happens next, is I think the most uh, attractive part to this match. Oh, I agree. There, there's a number of things or reasons to watch this match that don't have anything to do with who's going to win. And, and that's what's exciting for me. That's why, honestly, it's one of the ones I'm most looking forward to, seeing how they respond to this pressure and, you know, the negativity towards Nia. Like, I feel like there's a really cool mixture of what's going to happen and the type of match they can put on, which Oscar will win. And I think that's also a different aspect to this pay-per-view in general. If you look back at the, at the, recent pay-per-views over the last year this card in particular for me is really exciting there's matches on this card i'm like excited to watch normally there's a couple on the card that i'm like all right you know i don't really care for these but i'm gonna watch them anyway but i i, I mean every match i'm excited to, i'm excited to see i you think know, it's a different direction they're going 
with creative. I don't know what's happening, but something is happening internally right now where we're seeing matches that I really didn't expect to see, especially right after WrestleMania. No, I, I get that. And, and I agree. But honestly, being right after Mania is probably why we're getting this now that, exactly. you know, they're kind of hitting that refresh button, getting ready yeah. for this year. But you're right. I mean, we're going into a pay-per-view where we have Apollo Crews and Drew McIntyre in title matches where they are the champion. So yeah. it's a, uh, there could be some new things on the horizon and it is something I agree. I'm really excited about, you know, there does feel like there's been some fresh blood kind of moving through there, but um, yeah, I, I am, on, I'm intrigued to see how this show goes. I, I really am. I feel like there's a lot of interest um, built up. I will also tell you, I feel like by now WWE has gotten better at the no crowd COVID type production. So I feel like from that aspect, it's probably going to be the best one we've seen from them. So yeah. Um, lots of really, lots of really good things to look forward to. I completely agree. Now we'll check back in with Lil Pocky in just a short while because there is still so much more to go down right here on the Angles WWE Backlash pre-show. Now, one of the matches I want to talk about right now is one that pulls on the heartstrings more than the others on the card, and that is Jeff Hardy versus Sheamus. This match has been brewing for quite some time now. We've seen the in the inclusion of Elias and the injury angle and bringing in Jeff's real-life substance abuse issues. Now, this is one that people have been defensive on. This is a storyline that people haven't really uh, seen as a positive storyline. I, however, am loving this angle, no pun intended. I think that Jeff Hardy being able to talk about his real life issues, to talk about issues with, with substance abuse, and actually use it to bring positivity and entertainment to the fans. Now, though Jeff Hardy is out to prove himself tonight at WWE Backlash, we can say the same for the Celtic warrior Sheamus. Since returning earlier this year from injury, Sheamus has not really had the run he's wanted, despite taking out superstars like Chad Gable and other superstars that we've seen him uh, with the Intercontinental Championship Battle Royal that he, that he won. He really has not been to where he wants to be in the WWE. Now we see him back with his classic Sheamus style. That, that with the spiked hair and that beard is gone. He's back to being the Celtic warrior we all know and love. And I think this time he's out for redemption, but he's also out to make an impact. This match is gonna be a hard foul bout. From what we saw on Friday Night Smackdown with the urine sample, Sheamus, did not really get the great end of the stick, or might I well, might I, should I say, the short end of the stick. But I do believe that this match will be one of the most entertaining ones on the card. I, in my soul, want to say I think Jeff Hardy will win. But after what we saw in SmackDown, after we saw how enraged Sheamus is, I think he's going to go into this match focused, determined, and overall ready to redeem himself. Now, I'd love to see Jeff Hardy win, like I said, but I do think Sheamus is going to walk out with the win on this match. Now, there's other matches that have yet to be announced or have already been announced, and that includes Seth Rollins, the Monday Night Messiah, taking on Aleister Black. This match has been one that we've expected, we've seen sort of, and it hasn't really happened or hasn't really gone down the way we want it to. Sunday, tonight, WWE Backlash. We hope to see this match come to fruition. If this match does happen, I see some sort of way Aleister Black getting the win. Maybe we see an interference from Rey Mysterio or his son Dominic, who's out for an eye for an eye. We don't know. But there's another match on the card that we can possibly say the same for, and that is the Raw Tag Team Championship, the Raw Tag Team Champions, Street Profit, taking on the Viking Raiders. We've seen this storyline building for weeks. We've seen golf tournaments. We've seen axe throwing. We've seen basketball. We've seen everything in between, and it has finally come to this moment for the Raw Tag Team Championship match. If it does happen tonight at WWE Backlash, I 110% see the Street Profits retaining. This match, I believe, is going to be one of the most fun matches on the card. We might see it on a pre-show, I'm not sure exactly, but like I said, the Street Profits will take the win in this match. Now we're going to head back to the Zoom room with a new analyst, the Balor guy. I'm here with the Balor Club guy. How are you doing, sir? Very good. How are you? Doing good. And 
to my understanding, you have a podcast, correct? I do, yes. Um, it's called uh, Wrestle Scene with Jay Beans on the scene. Awesome, awesome. Um, you can find it on uh, Anchor. Is how I record it. Um, but it's also on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Cool. And on Twitter, it's at Ballot Club Guy. What's What's your Twitter handle? Yes, it's uh, at the Ballot Club Guy on Twitter. Cool. And again, I want to thank you for coming on and taking time out to uh, talk about these matches. This, to me in particular, is a unique card that we really haven't seen in a while. Typically, I get excited for a couple matches on the WWE pay-per-view cards. Um, as I was talking to one of my other analysts from yesterday, I said that this card in particular, I'm just excited for all of the matches. There's not one match that I'm not excited to see, and I think it's a different direction for WWE. Um, and that, you know, one of those matches being for the United States Championship, the new champion Apollo versus Andrade. What are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, you know, uh, I'm happy for Andrade, uh, for Apollo, you know, um, winning the United States Championship. I thought that was a very good choice for WWE to make. Um, you know, it's going to be, a, I'm excited for this match. Um, I never thought they used Apollo to the potential he could be used. Uh, and now, you know, he's got the uh, United States Championship. He's going up against Andrade, the former United States champion. I think it's going to be a great match. I believe so too. And we saw him starting to be used before Money in the Bank. He was uh, actually scheduled to be in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Um, yes. Under circumstances, whatever happened, he got injured, according to storyline. He got injured uh, and was pulled out of that match. Um, but we saw some sparks back, you know, then for him to kind of get some sort of push. And this, I think, is the best time to do that because there is no live crowd. This is their chance to really, you know, test the waters with different superstars. And Apollo was one. Another one, for example, is Chad Gable or Shory G. These are people that people want to see more of. They don't really see them uh, who have so much great potential to be a champion now like Apollo. Um, so I'm just excited to see Apollo finally being used properly. Uh, he has some wins over Andrade. Do you think that this could be an opening for uh, one of Zelina Vega's associates to help Andrade uh, regain that title? Or do you think that Apollo Cruz is going to retain his newly won title? Um, I'm going to have to go Apollo to retain. Um, I, I don't see Apollo losing yet. Not, you know, I think he'll get a good, a good run with the United States championship. I mean, I will definitely, I could see definitely interference in the match, you know, but I don't think it would be to help Andrade. I think it's going to be, um, Angel Garza, you know, getting like that revenge because I'm pretty sure if I'm correct, Andrade, didn't Andrade pin Angel Garza on Raw? Yeah, on, on Monday. Yeah, so I could. Yeah, so I could see some tensions happening in that uh, circle there. So I'm going Apollo to retain the United States Championship. Well, we did see them get rid of Austin Theory, you know, kind of going his own direction with Seth Rollins. And we knew that this storyline with uh, Zelina Vega's associates, with Andrade and uh, Andrew Garza, wasn't a long-term thing. It's just, this is just to build these guys up, to give them more TV time, obviously. And to me, I thought Andrew Garza was going to win that triple threat to earn this opportunity because we've already seen Andrade, you know, he had the title, lost the title, lost, or I think a rematch and then lost in a, in a tag team match to Apollo. I mean, Apollo has some clean wins, a few clean wins over Andrade. Uh, so this kind of leads me to think maybe, I don't know, maybe they're trying to just utilize Andrade as much as possible to let Angel Garza come in, you know, swoop in and kind of take that spotlight. Yeah, I mean, like you said, um, Apollo's been getting a lot of clean wins. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, I'm just rooting for Apollo on this one. Um, cause like you said, Andrade, he's had the championship before. But, I mean, Andrade's a great wrestler. So good. either way, it's going to be a great match. I agree. I think my personal opinion, Apollo is going to retain this title. I mean, he's even got new theme music. Like, they're just trying to change his whole perception. And uh, I don't know. I'm just excited to see this new, like, angle, so to say. No pun intended. 
But uh, <laughs> this new position that they're putting him in, especially, I mean, I don't know if you realize, but his promo skills have gotten so much better too. A lot of the problem that he was having was he wasn't really that great on the mic. He was kind of just boring and, you know, very non kind of charismatic. And now, I mean, I, him on the mic is just, I'm, I am give him major props for everything that he's doing. Yeah, uh, I'm definitely liking what they're doing with Apollo. He's, he's, now he's showing his – now to let him show his full potential. Of course. And being there for such a long time, I mean, I remember – what is it? He's been there for, what, five years already? He started in yeah. NXT, and he was brought in, and, you know, he was so over. And they kind of – in my opinion, they dropped the ball with him. They didn't really let him – they kind of gave him too much direction of what they wanted and didn't really let him be himself. And now I see more of that – authenticity coming out and I think that you know this run especially with the U.S. title his first title in WWE by the way I yeah. think it would be a successful run I don't know I see Apollo winning this match hands down I agree now after this match uh if Apollo does win who do you see next in line to go for the U.S. title because there's a lot of contenders that are not really being talked about right now I mean obviously we have like Buddy Murphy and Austin Theory uh, with Seth Rollins, there's Kevin Owens. Uh, there's so many other people that can, you know, come up and have an opportunity from this. So who do you think would be the best fit to be the next opponent for this title? Um, well, I know he's been, you know, teasing a lot on Twitter. I mean, I don't know, like, you know, you read the dirt sheet, so you see, like, oh, this person might be getting called up, this person might be getting called up. Yep. If he is getting called up, um, Dominic uh, Diver Kojak, is that how you pronounce his last name? Yeah, Kovic, yep. Yeah, I, could, I think that would be a great uh, feud, Apollo and Dominic. Um, I think so, too. It would be a fresh, you know, a fresh feud, Yeah. you know. Um, and that Dominic Diver Kojak, that guy is massive. I've seen him wrestle, like, at indie shows. He's just, he's what, like, a champion looks like. So, I think that would be a, a fresh feud. Of course. I think, I mean, like, he's been teasing it for a little while now. He posted a picture of the U.S. title back uh, last week or two weeks ago, whenever he was going to apparently make a, his debut on Monday Night Raw. It's being teased. And like you said, all the reports are saying that he is being called up. Um, I would love to see him in that, you know, in that division and eventually make his way up. I think he can hold a world title. I think he's got the look. He's got the size. He's got, you know, the persona. He's got the moveset. I mean, he's overall great. That's why they're bringing him up, if they, if they are. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think that's a great choice for uh, a next opponent for Apollo. But I do want to jump into another match, uh, okay. one that I think everyone is really looking forward to. It's being billed as the best, the greatest wrestling match ever. The Viper, Randy Orton, taking on the returning, finally, after nine long years, the Rated R Superstar Edge. What are your thoughts on this match? How do you feel about it? I mean, there's a, I know there's a lot of motion built into it. So just yeah, to- um, I'm looking forward to this match. You know, um, you know, I was at the Royal Rumble when Edge came back, and uh, that was wow. amazing. Edge looks better than he ever has. Um, you know, now they're billing it as the greatest wrestling match ever, which I'm not. You know, I'm not a fan of that title, but um, it is what it is as far as that. But I think this will be a, a great wrestling match. I think so, too. And, I mean, we know that it is pre-taped. We know it's not going to be a live match. They pre-taped the match to kind of uh, edit some things. Uh, they wanted some classic angles in there, too, with the camera. And, I don't know, I, I think that billing it as the greatest match ever uh, – kind of puts too much high, like too many high expectations on it. And yeah. if it doesn't live up to that, it, I mean, I don't know. I just, I, I don't like those gimmick kind of things they do with matches. If they were just to say, you know, this is going to be the main event of the show, Edge versus Orton, uh, and really just leave it up to, you know, leave the details out there from the current storyline with, you know, Edge finally being able to come back. And, you know, Edge being known for, more of an extreme a- athlete, you know, t- TLC matches, ladder matches. Having that match at WrestleMania, that was in Edge's favor, although not being, you know, active for nine years. So now being in a wrestling match, 
we both know, or at least I know, the better wrestler, overall wrestler, is Randy Orton. I agree. Um, not saying he's, like, my favorite. I'm saying, like, if, if you look at, you know, his in-ring style, Randy Orton is one of the best ever in the ring. Um, yeah. So this match, I think, goes in favor of Orton. Um, but who, what do you, who do you think is going to take the win? Um, I'm going to have to agree with you. I'm going Randy Orton to pick up the win. Um, you know, Edge got his uh, WrestleMania win. Um, it seems like they're going to be having this feud go for, you know, at least till SummerSlam, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I'm going Randy Orton because, like you said, if, if this is a wrestling match, you know, Wrestle, WrestleMania, that was, you know, no holds barred, extreme Edge style. So, wrestling match, this is Orton's match to win. I'm going Randy Orton. Now, I, ha- I kind of have a unique uh, outlook on this match. Um, I tend to look at the matches overall, like who has the most to gain, who has the most to lose. Um, and both of those questions are answered for me, honestly, by Edge. Edge has the most to gain, and he has the most to lose because he hasn't had a one-on-one match in almost 10 years. This is his first real you know, moment back where he has to prove to himself, prove to the fans, prove even to the company that he can, you know, still be edge. Uh, if he loses this match, I mean, he kind of, in my opinion, loses a lot of other things too. I mean, he's back now. He's not full-time, obviously. But this can lead to title matches. This can lead to more classic matches. If Randy Orton loses this match, nothing is really going to be affecting his, in his career. If Randy Orton wins this match, it's not like he's going to the world title scene. He's kind of floating around right now. So, in my opinion, this match benefits and can also hurt Edge more. So, in my opinion, I have to say Edge. I think Edge is going to get the win. Um, okay. Because if, if Randy Orton wins, it's not like he's going to be pushed somewhere. You know, th- he's just yeah. he's being utilized right now to help bring back Edge into the fold. We both know that Edge and Orton have had some great feuds over the years. Um, oh, yeah. So I think this is a great way just to bring Edge back into the fold of things. Um, but I don't, I, I don't know. I, I can see Randy New York and winning the match, but what's the point? Where does he go from there? Yeah. That, that's my biggest concern. Very true. Um, where does, where does yeah. he go? Yeah, because like you said, he's not going to be challenging for the, you know, the WWE championship. So. I mean, I could see him be a contender against Drew McIntyre. That would be a great feud for the title. That would be a great feud. We saw um, kind of rumbling a little bit going into the Royal Rumble, those two feuding. So, it yeah, be, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, yeah, like you said, it's, yeah, it's one of those like, you know, catch 22s. If Edge loses, I don't know. I kind of feel like it could be, I don't know. I kind of, if I was just like fancy booking, like I would have Orton win at back, uh, Orton win in the match, and then you could have, like the tiebreaker match, um, do like Edge versus Orton, Extreme Rules, and like, you know, just like from fantasy book and like, uh, like TLC match, and, you know, like, I don't know, Loser Leaves, Raw or something, but I don't know, it's going to be, I, I'm excited for it. Edge and Orton, I'm, they always deliver. Of course, and from what the reports that I've been reading have said, that this is, is a phenomenal match. It's a great match. Um, I don't really like the aspect of it being taped. Uh, yeah. Pre-taped because it kind of takes away from watching it live because we know it's taped. You know, it's, we know that we're not watching yeah. live action match, especially when it's being billed as the greatest wrestling match ever. But another thing, too, which I think, think a lot of people realize is that this feud has been going on. This is, we're six months into the year. This is a six-month-long yeah. feud. So if they keep going to SummerSlam or to another tiebreaker, I mean, this is one of the longest storylines yeah. we've seen in, I don't know, how eight, an eight-month feud we're going to have with these two. Yeah. Me, personally, I feel like this match on Sun or this match coming up uh, should be the end of it, um, okay. which is why I think that Edge will win because he won at WrestleMania. If he wins, you know, at Backlash, then it's over. If Orton yeah. wins, then there may be another, like you said, continuation of this feud. But I don't know how much longer I'm invested in. Because, they're listen, the promos have been great. The Everything overall has been great. 
But it's, I just feel like it's too drawn out at this point. Yeah. I don't know. How do you feel? I, I agree with that? Yeah, I, I can feel that way too. I mean, like you said, it's, it's been, like I said, six months. And, you know, with the no audience, you know, they have audience now, the, uh, the NXT performers. So it's like you said, you know, you, you keep drawing it out. I mean, I think you could draw it out to extreme rules, but there's so many questions and, you know, like, okay, Orton wins. What does Edge do? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you on that. Uh, Edge would benefit more from the win. I still, I still think Orton wins. Um, on paper, Orton, Orton did, wins. Yeah, on, on paper, Orton wins. And if yeah. Orton does win and they extend it to Extreme Rules, okay, then Extreme Rules, that's the final match. They need to build that then as the final like final match and then figure out from there. Of course. Um, are there, what are your thoughts on the card overall? Is there anything that you're looking forward to other than the Orton Edge match? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm uh, really looking forward to uh, Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre. Um, I think that's going to tell us where – where they go, where they're going to be going with Bobby Lashley. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to, I think the storyline has been great with that. Um, MVP with Bobby Lashley. Um, I'm also looking forward to um, the triple threat for the women's tag team championships. I was very surprised that they put the titles on Bailey and Sasha. I was too. about that. I was too. And I was kind of disappointed in it just because, recently the women's tag titles have had more tv time over the last month or two actually no even ever since wrestlemania i could say that they've really had some more tv time we see the iconics being brought back which by the way i love them as a team i think they're hilarious yeah. and yeah. what we've seen on monday night raw so far from being them being back they, they're more aggressive they're more focused and i think they've been yeah. a lot i mean hanging in the ring with with Oscar and Flair, Charlotte Flair, and then Bailey, Bailey and Sasha. I mean, it's not like what it used to be, where you didn't really think they had a chance. You know, no, they very, yeah. very. They've developed a lot. Um, I don't know. I, I I like the Iconics a lot. Uh, Bailey and Sasha. We all, everybody knows this is where this storyline is going. This is, yeah. uh, and I've tweeted this multiple times, and I argue with people about it all the time. WWE has this concept where when they have a team where they want to start a feud sometimes they'll put them as a team or sometimes if they are already a team they'll have them win the tag titles and it's like this glorious moment and then one gets jealous over the other or one gets more spotlight than the other and one turns and it becomes a feud and i think that's where we're going with sasha and, and bailey i don't think they needed the tag titles to do that i think that if you had you know sasha pick up some wins and let Bailey get jealous that she's the champ, but Sasha's getting the wins. Bailey turns on Sasha, and now we have a face Sasha Banks with a heel Bailey, and that leads to SummerSlam for the title. Um, this is ultimately going to lead to one of them being pinned for the tag titles and being turned on. I I agree. I agree with you on that. Um, you know, like you said, they didn't need the tag titles to get to this to this match. Everyone. I mean, this match has been written forever. I mean, it's it's yeah. there. Um, you know, if like you said, so I I think one of them will get pinned. Um, if I had to pick a winner for the tag titles, I would pick the Iconics. That's who I see winning this match too. I mean, it's it's hard to decide, especially with this match. I mean. This is the first time in a long time that I'm excited for a women's tag title match on a pay-per-view. I mean, this is going to yeah. be a, a fantastic match. Um, I do want the Iconics to win, um, but I, some reason, I see Sasha and Bailey retaining, just holding on for a little longer. Okay. Um, but I want the Iconics to win, and I wouldn't even mind Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross mm. taking the tag titles back because I love them as a team. Their dynamic is so great. So yeah. it's, it's going really to be a fun match. Yeah, it's going to be a fun match. So I don't know. Alexa off. Sorry. All good. <laughs> I said Alexa Bliss and my Alexa heard Alexa. So 
<laughs> it's all good. And it started playing the process thing. That's pretty funny too. <laughs> yeah, but um, oh, one other uh, match I just want to uh, talk about real quick: uh, the two-on-one, the handicap match. Braun Strowman defending the Universal Championship against Miz and Morrison. What, what do you think about that? Um, I'm not that much of a fan of it. I know it's going to be an entertaining match because we've seen uh, some entertaining spots on SmackDown. You know, Miz and Morrison with the truck and. Oh man, that was hilarious. It's it's something that we haven't really seen. Yeah. In a while from them too, and it's just them having fun, and I think it's more authentic than what we've seen before. Um, yeah. But I spoke to one of my other analysts yesterday about this match, or before about this match. And this is go, can go one of two ways. This can either, one, make Braun look really strong beating both guys. Or two, this can tease the breakup of Miz and Morrison. Okay. Because we've seen a little bit here and there, like, uh, Morrison saying, Miz will take you on to Braun. Or Miz, you know, saying, John will take you on. And he's like, what? You know, we've seen a little bit uh, tis for tat, you know, on SmackDown. Um, but you never know with these things. Yeah. What do, what do you think? Um, me, I think, um, I think this was kind of like a, a filler match. Um, you know, everyone, you know, um, I think it's just a filler match. I see Ron King, um, be like a quick retain, um, you know, or like I could see maybe like, uh, Morrison leaving Miz in the ring, or vice versa, Miz leaving Morrison in the ring. Braun gets the pin. Yeah. Uh, lights go out. The Fiend shows up. You know, or Bray Wyatt shows up, or the puppets show up from the Firefly Funhouse. I think this is going to just be a filler match, and then Extreme Rules or SummerSlam. We're going to get that Fiend versus. I agree. Braun Strowman. I agree. Oh. Yeah. I definitely. I could say I could definitely see maybe a tease of Bray on uh, at, during the match. I, I can see that too, where, you know, uh, Ms. Morrison get pinned real quickly, and then all of a sudden the lights go out and Fiend's in the ring. Ms. Morrison disappeared, and then we kind of set up, you know, for SummerSlam or whatever the next pay per view is. Um, but I definitely think this is going to be, it's a filler match, like you said, and I think that it's going to be Braun 100%. There's no chance in my mind that Ms. Morrison holds that. Although it would be entertaining to see, you know, two different. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen it teased before with Daniel, with uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens a couple years back. Yeah, um, yeah. But I don't think I don't think it's time that they're gonna do that. I think if the, if they're gonna do that, they're gonna do that with uh, a group like the New Day or something that they plan on breaking up or something. Uh, yeah. To make as much story from it as possible, but this is Braun 100. percent Now I want to take a second to thank the Battle Club guy for taking the time to be on this exclusive panel. Now, I did promote the show by saying we were going to have some special guests, yet I'm still waiting on a few to call in. And it's been a little while, but I... He's on the line. We'll send him in. Oh, wrestling fans! Don't you dare be sour! Clap for the Angle Podcast! And feel the power! <laughs> yes, it is I, Big E, of the New Day. And if you're looking for the best wrestling podcast of all time, the best wrestling podcast out there, you found the right one. I'm talking about the Angle Podcast. That's right, T-H-E, the Angle, A-N-G-L-E podcast. Now, I know you know how to spell the Angle podcast, but I want to make sure there's no confusion. There's no confusion if you're looking for the very best podcast about wrestling and all things wrestling. You're right here. You're in the right spot. Listen to, subscribe, like, download right now. The Angle Podcast. <laughs> yes, the Angle Podcast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen.
gentlemen, if you are just tuning in, that was eight-time WWE Tag Team Champion of the New Day, Big E, making a short appearance on The Angle. Ladies and gentlemen, the Big E was just on The Angle podcast. I'm sure there'll be many more to come down the road. Again, I want to thank Big E for being on The Angle. Now, I want to head back to the Zoom room with Lil Pocky from the Botch Finish to finish up the predictions for WWE Backlash. Back to the Zoom room. Roman and The Fiend are the only ones that come to mind that are able to elevate Braun Strowman from where he is right now. Of course. Everyone else would just be a lateral thing. Now, there is a wild card that we haven't spoken about yet, and that is Mr. Money in the Bank, Otis. What, do you, what are your thoughts on that while we're on the world titles topic? What do you, what do you think about Otis? I want Otis, to, I want Otis to cash in on the tag titles with Tucker. Yeah. I want them to set a precedent that if you win it, you can tie, you can cash in on any world championship, not just the singles, nothing like that. I, I mean, he that publicly that said that. Cool. He publicly said he wanted to fit, you know, yeah. compete for the tag and, and, Yeah, he did, and, and multiple times, like interviews yeah. and all that, which is why I think it's something that could be coming. I think if I had to bet right now, they're trying to get a feel for what Otis as a singles competitor looks like, and, you know, yeah. we still don't know. I don't think he's anywhere near being a world champion yet. He's not even on I, the card for Sunday. Hmm? Yeah, exactly. He's not on the card. Exactly. No, we'll, I will, we'll probably get some promo of him at like a, a hot tub or something. That's not in Zack Ryder slash Matt Cardone in oh, the backyard. Yeah. I'm not sure yeah. if you heard about that. I did. That's that's, <laughs> that's a crazy story. That, I, uh, <laughs> it, is, it is. But um, oh yeah, I mean, ultimately, <laughs> if I had to pick what I wanted to see Otis do with his briefcase, I'd like to see him cash it in for tag titles. Now, is he even really in the tag team anymore? Because when he comes out to the ring, it doesn't say heavy machinery anymore on the graphics. It just says Otis. No. Uh, it's a good question. I can't, I can't remember the last time I saw Tucker, to tell you the truth. But I think he got taken out by uh, Dolph or something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they wrote yeah. him off. So they – um, I don't know. It's – I feel like Otis, it's a much better environment for Otis to gain exposure and experience and kind of organically grow into this charismatic beast that he is. Yeah. Being in the ring with more people. I think when you have less people around Otis, you start to notice more parts of Otis that you don't really want to. Like, yeah. I don't know. And, and, I, and I don't get me wrong. Like, I think he's a great athlete. I think he's of a talented guy even with outside of the whole comedy shtick like he's strong he moves well for that size he's just he's not ready for the single spotlight that most people are ready for when they get that briefcase so they should handle it differently i think that this otis in particular yeah he was over with the fans you know the fans loved him because he was relatable or, or whatnot mm -hmm. but do I think he should be holding on to that briefcase? No. I mean, when was the last time he won a clean match? When he was in the tag team. Yeah. <laughs> Every match that he's had so far. I mean, look at the way he won the briefcase. It fell, literally fell into his hands from AJ Styles. And ever since then, he hasn't won a singles match, tag team match, anything clean. It's, it's been like, for example, last week was a disqualification. The week before or whenever the last time he was in the match, it's not a clean win. No, it's not. And I mean, he has, uh, the thing is, is we don't, it hasn't led to an evolution in his character. No, Basically, I Basically, the Otis that we have right now with the, with the briefcase is the same Otis that was dumping pancake batter on his stomach a few months ago. Yeah. Like the only thing that's changed is he has a briefcase and he has Mandy Rose, but like what you want to see as characters, you know, triumph or fail or whatnot, it's you want to see some sort of evolution there. Like Otis, oh, hey, I'm on Mr. Money in the Bank. I'm starting to take a few more things a little more seriously. And, you know, but it's not. It's just the same character with more stuff around him. Of course. In my opinion, it's a way for them to sell more merchandise. Because Otis was over. You know, yeah. he, he was a character. I don't think that they're going to put the title on him. Do you think that there's a possibility where he could be put in a match where that briefcase is on the line? Because right now he's on a, you know, a really hot streak. He's got Mandy Rose. He's been winning all these matches by not actually winning, you know, does mm -hmm. that spark, you know, burn out and does he ultimately lose that briefcase to someone else? I feel like it's a real possibility. 
Like if they're not going to come more with, I mean, years ago we saw edge take the briefcase from Mr. Kennedy. Well, it's up and, and then um, Sandow lost his, didn't he? Sandow, yeah. yeah. And then edge actually put it up in another match, but defended it. Like, so it's been done before. And, and that's it definitely, definitely a great storyline to go forward with. If you don't want to, you know, if you want to keep Otis on the side, you know, dangling that briefcase, put him in a feud. Like, for example, let him feud more with Dolph Ziggler where that briefcase goes on the line. It makes the match more interesting. Oh, well, it definitely does. And, and Dolph isn't a bad guy to do that with. Dolph exactly. has a lot of experience being Mr. Money in the Bank himself. And, you know, there's – there's a lot that Dolph could do to really establish Otis, like as a singles competitor. Because right now, Otis is a tag wrestler that we like to see in comedy skits. Like skits. Like I, I don't see him as a completed singles package yet, which yeah. is what typically you need to be if you're gonna take a singles title. So yeah, if they can't answer those questions, what does Otis look like as a singles competitor? Where do we see his ceiling being? Where do we want him to get to? then, yeah, I could definitely see them taking that off of him and dropping it to somebody else in, like, a Mr. Kennedy versus Edge type way. I, and listen, I was a fan of Otis. I, I still am. But right now, like, I'm just – I'm kind of tired of it. You know, it's like he comes on the TV and it's like I know what I'm getting. It's not yeah. – to me, it's not as entertaining as it was before because it was organic before. Like, that's who they were, him and Tucker, heavy machinery. We saw them come through NXT. It was, you know – it was an organic build. Now I feel like it's being kind of, you know, it's being pushed. Yeah, it's fake, plastic. Fake. Yeah. And, I, and, and you're right. Kill, does it kill his character? The way they're going? I mean. Are they killing? Yeah. I mean, it's not that he's, it's not like he's not going to be able to work for them going forward. No, but no, as no. far as, as far as what they have him doing now is it's taking all the, organic fan support out of what we liked about him yeah just taking it out of it like i mean fans will laugh at something if it's funny and they think it's funny just don't tell them it's funny of course i don't know this is uh, do we see before we end this uh universal title picture topic do you see him or oh, just being involved somewhat in this match on sunday no no whatsoever no i, I see otis's involvement at the pay-per-view being Something to do with the backstage, Mandy Rose, Sonia Deville, like, like, shtick. Like, that's what I see Otis doing. I don't think he does anything in the ring. I don't think he gets near it. I don't even think they tease, like, if the champion, like, knocked down, you know? Like, yeah. I just, I don't think that they're ready or we're ready as fans to see Otis in that mix quite yet, even though he probably should be as yeah. money, money in the bank. I mean, we'll probably see him in some sort of interview, like you said earlier, like during the yeah. pre or something like. Yeah. like. Like, he'll be there. He'll do something. I just yeah. – I don't think he's going to get involved in the title match at all. Yeah. Well, speaking of title matches, well, before we jump to that, you predict Braun's going to get the win. Yeah. I'm predicting Braun's going to get the win. I mean, this is, this is a no-brainer. But while mm -hmm. we're on the topic of championships, the WWE Championship, Drew McIntyre is putting his title on the line, his well-deserved title on the line against Bobby Lashley. What are your thoughts on this match? Well, first, let me echo your statement. The, uh, Drew McIntyre is currently enjoying a well-deserved, long-earned title reign. And, you know, congratulations. It's great to see, um, you know, for, us, for those of us that have been fans long enough to really know what Drew's story was like, you know, it's, it's especially satisfying for us to see. Um, now, that being said, there's a couple of things in this match that, I don't know. I, I just, I feel like there's more coming here. There's, we don't, we don't know all the pieces. M MVP, by the way, has been fantastic in his role for Lashley. Like yeah. he, he is the underrated star of what they have going on right there right now. Yep. Um, Lashley is, Lashley is ready for a bigger spotlight, but I don't think it should be at, um, the expense of Drew's title reign. So let me just get to it. I think Drew is going to win the match. I think it's going to be a very competitive match. And I think Drew's going to win uh, on, on some sort of like shenanigan fashion, like maybe not win, but retain just because I think that there's a lot of good stuff going on with Drew, Bobby Lashley and MVP. And I'd like to see more of it. I just, there's no, 
there's no part of me that thinks they would drop the belt off of Drew this quickly after WrestleMania when he really is the big story. Like, he's the underdog, like, you know, woo-hoo type of moment for all of wrestling last year. So, I don't, I don't see him losing it. I do, I don't, I also don't see this being the last time we get Drew and Bobby Lashley, though. I agree with everything you just said 100%. This match, I think, is a tease to see Bobby Lashley in the main event picture again. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think he's going to earn that title on Sunday. I think that it's going to be, obviously, Drew McIntyre getting that win. But like you said, shenanigans. There's one component to this, well, Lashley in general, not even the title picture, but Lashley in general. There's Lana. And we've been seeing some turmoil with them backstage, MVP kind of taking that role from Lana. By the way, helping Lana get over in a way that I still can't stand her. So MVP, like you said, doing a great job with Lana and Lashley. <laughs> I know. He's keeping them both relevant right now. Exactly. Um, but I, like, like you said, I definitely think MVP is, is the best fit to put with Lashley. Lashley, I don't think, survives on his own. No, well, w- that's, w- kind of, that's kind of always been the knock against Lashley, right? Yeah. There are a lot of people that say Lashley is Brock Lesnar without a manager, right? Like, and when you think about it, there is a lot of parallels you can draw there. Yeah. But if we are going to keep thinking about that comparison, obviously Brock Lesnar is a huge draw with the right manager. Exactly. And so far out of everyone that's been auditioned, MVP is the guy. So, you know, this – more so than any single thing Bobby Lashley's had running for him since his return to WWE, this could be what actually gets him to world champion. So, you know, that's what Bobby Lashley fans should be looking for and hoping for is that this is an entertaining enough match that we, there's reason for us to keep going back to it and go back to it until it's time for Lashley to take the belt. Yeah. I don't think that Drew is dropping that title anytime soon. Like he no. is legit, he is legit a champion. Like, like you said, you know, knowing his backstory, him watching him debut, you know, in 2005, 2006, whenever he, whenever he came into the, the company originally, being let go, being brought back, starting from NXT, coming all the way back up, winning the Royal Rumble. I mean, it's, it's a freaking story. It is. Um, it definitely and for is. him to be the champion right now, I can't think of another time we actually had a legitimate champion, like a top champion in WWE that like, at least I was invested in. We've seen the thing with Lesnar over the years. We saw Seth in there. Seth, I could say, was the last champion that I can say that I really was invested in. Um, but with, you know, in regards to the WWE title and universal title, like there, being there, a part of that journey, I would say. Well, and you're right. But with Seth, there was a certain period where it was – you couldn't miss. Like, yeah. there was a certain period where he honestly should have been elevated to the guy in the company. Yeah. But but they kind of missed – it was just a little late for me. Yeah. Um, I will say that I do believe there have been recent champions that have just as much support among fans as Drew McIntyre. The difference is, is that the other ones were on accident. Becky Lynch. Kofi Kingston, no one saw either of those situations happening and nobody saw either of those things going the way they should, but WWE for once recognized it and capitalized on it. Whereas Drew McIntyre was a conscious choice. They built to it. They built him to it. They teased it. They booked like, like that was them saying, okay, this is the guy. It wasn't them saying, Oh crap, listen to the crowd. We got to get him a title. Like, so it's, I don't know. For one, it's it's honestly, again, very happy to see. Like, it's really satisfying as a fan. I think it shows that Drew McIntyre probably will have more staying power than, say, a Kofi Kingston, which they right. didn't really know what they were doing with. But, um, I mean, that's what I'm bringing up. That, that's the last one I was invested in, but that's personal reasons I'm a Kofi fan. So, oh, you know, I am that's, too. Um, yeah. Yeah, like, that's the difference for me is this one was on purpose, whereas – somebody like Kofi and even Daniel Bryan back in, you know, um, 2014, 2015, that was an accident. Like these things aren't decision. This one is a decision, a a thoughtful premeditated. This is our guy type of situation. Yep. That's what I was, that actually brings up a a really cool point because I was not really an argument, but like we were debating back and forth with one of my Twitter followers last week. 
that they didn't think that Drew McIntyre's rise to where he is right now was organic. They thought that it was all uh, it was all WWE putting him there. But if you look back, you know, around the Royal Rumble time when he was he was a heel. Mm-hmm. November, December, he was a heel, and he, he organically started getting those cheers from the crowd while being a heel. You know, he was feuding with he was had a little feud with with Randy Orton leading to the Royal Rumble, and then I remember he he cut one promo on Monday Night Raw where he basically said, "I'm going to win the whole damn Royal Rumble," and that was a switch. We saw we saw a face turn, mm-hmm. and well, it really wasn't even that strong of a face turn. It's like he just yeah. like people like they finally let people start cheering for him. Like exactly. honestly, the character didn't change much. He didn't no. kick people less or was okay. less aggressive. It was just a it was a thought pattern change from the company, from management saying, okay, now we're cool with them cheering you. So, you know, we're not going to, we're just going to stop putting you next to guys that we want to get over as heels like Corbin yeah. and Ziggler. And we're just going to let you do your thing. So, you know, the thing with, and I actually got into a little bit of a conversation with one of my Twitter followers, funny <laughs> enough about how they felt that Drew had been force fed and specifically they called it the Roman Reigns push that Drew, Drew McIntyre's on the Roman Reigns push. Yeah, I, I, well, I disagreed. <laughs> I completely disagreed because I pointed out that Drew McIntyre has, what, 12, 13 years in the company before his first world championship. You want to take a wild guess what Roman had? Under four. Yeah. So, and that's what I tried to point out to people. is like, yeah, you know this Drew McIntyre, but you don't know the Drew McIntyre that showed up and you know was a bus that had to work from underneath that was in some very ill-fated groups like 3mb that got released and had to go and, and build his body and build his psyche and build his character basically rebuild himself as a wrestler in order to come back and be this 100%. if you don't appreciate how organic the build is it's because you don't know the build so I just I recommend someone go back and watch 3MB, watch the chosen one, Drew McIntyre, watch that guy because that's the same one. Drew Galloway, Drew Galloway yeah. had Impact, you know, like it's not just his run in WWE. He was everywhere trying to get back to that to that spot. It put it on great matches, fantastic matches. I saw the match, uh, one of the matches he and Cody did while he was Drew Galloway. Yeah, yeah it was just a little while ago. In fact, it was the last one before he came back to NXT, and uh, on a just like. Watching him there, like seeing that guy, because I had followed him and I've gone back to see the Drew Galloway stuff, but yeah. I wasn't an act actively watching him. But when I watch that match and I know where he is now and I know like they had this really cool, you know, um, back and forth at the end, you know, he wished them all the best. And um, in fact, Cody ended up saying is I still believe you're a future world champion. No one's going to change my mind. And look, yeah. he was right. <laughs> so um, but I mean that, that's what that's what I mean is everyone thought Drew McIntyre could get could get there when he left became Drew Galloway and came back everyone knew he was there and it was just a matter of time so you know bravo for that happening I just um, I would caution people to I would caution people that think it's forced because it is not if it was forced it would have been forced on us back in 2009 when he was the chosen one it would have been forced. How long has Drew been on the main roster now? Since coming, you know, coming up from NXT, oh, two from years, NXT. So yeah, two, two, two three years, years almost already. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would have happened then. And mm-hmm. I think at this point, people were just waiting for the trigger to be pulled because we knew it was inevitable. We knew he was going to be there. We just didn't know when. Yeah, and and from my experience, that's really the majority of the response from fans is people yeah. being happy to see that he finally got it. That they yeah. finally pulled the trigger and he finally got that title. So, um, you know, they're, they're not going to make everyone else happy. I just, you know, I really, I guess what I'm trying to say is if anyone's not familiar with the Drew McIntyre we had prior to two or three years ago, go back and look because he has come a long way. And it is something that is very, very impressive to see who he is and where he is and the wrestler that he is today. Well, I keep talking to people about this match uh, with Drew and Lashley and, I'm, I think I'm more excited than most people that I talk to about it, and they don't understand why. And I say, if you go look back at both of these, actually all three of them, including MVP, mm-hmm. in Impact Wrestling, 
they feuded. Lashley and Drew, and Lashley had MVP in his corner. Mm-hmm. So this is a story that's before WWE, well, during or after, before WWE, making its way over to the time. Yeah. So there is history already. There is tape everybody can go watch that's, can be, that can be part of a buildup for this match. Mm-hmm. It's not just what you're seeing on Monday Night Raw. There is a lot of history between these two. And for me, I mean, I never – I always I liked Bobby Lashley when he came into WWE in 2005, 2006, when he was being billed uh, against Cena at the time. I think mm-hmm. that was – he had an opportunity. He was being, uh, you know, fed everybody, this big, bad, you know, military guy. Mm-hmm. They had him with Cena at Survivor Series, the last two guys. And then ultimately they pulled, a pl- they, they pulled the trigger and let him face Cena for the title. And that was it. We never really saw that much more from Lashley. We never saw a heel turn from Lashley like we did in Impact or TNA. No, and, yeah, and he had a really short run. And I mean, I can tell you that from what I've seen of the Drew Galloway, um, Lashley stuff from TNA, at least for me, that's some of the best Lashley stuff I've seen. That's like, when I got reinvested in Lashley. So, well, yeah. And um, if we get more of that guy, you know, more of that, like, unstoppable, like, for – like, yeah, then – the, basically, that's what I'm hoping happens. And, and you're right. I, be, because this is kind of a rehash of what TNA did, and we know how successful that was, like, that's why I'm so excited that this could be what gets Lashley to where he should be. Because I do believe he has every every talent and, and every, uh, you know, due paid in full that he should in order to be in those main events. And, um, you know, this – if we get that Lashley working with this Drew McIntyre – slash Galloway, whatever, then yeah, dude, we're going to, he has a real shot. And it's something that, you know, I think many fans, more so than even just Lashley fans, many fans would like to see. It's like to see Bobby Lashley maybe get some some time in the sunlight here. Yeah, because his first run with WWE, there was no substance to it. There was no, like, character build. It was just this big okay. guy, and he dominates. Yep, big you know? guy, lots of muscles, dominates. We'll keep, we'll just keep a bunch of people around him. I think at one point he held the U- the United States title, but I think yeah. back then everybody did at one point. So it wasn't even. He was also ECW champion for a spell. ECW, yeah, ECW champion as well. I can't forget that. But uh, it, I wasn't like invested that much. And then when he when he got released and he went away, I kind of like forgot about him. And then he showed up back in you know Impact TNA, turned heel and really developed a character. And I was like, holy shit, this guy is like really good. Like. And then when he came back to WWE a few years ago, I thought that's the Lashley we were going to get. And it wasn't. It wasn't. It was just some and it, it, like brief it bothered update me version of Lashley that they had. Yeah. It bothered me to my core. And I knew eventually they were going to bring him back as the Lashley that they had originally created. And then kind of trans, you know, transition him over to a better version, which, let's be honest, the better version of Lashley was in TNA. Yeah, no, it was. Well, and, and that's not uncommon. Like, WWE lives in its own bubble. And so if it's it, – by default, if it happened in this bubble, it's better than what happened outside of it. And that's not the truth. Like, even with Matt Hardy, for instance, I know recently AEW signed Matt Hardy, whatever. Like, when they brought him back, he had arguably the most popular character in the entire world. And, and I don't say that lightly. He, like, broken Matt Hardy was that big of a deal. And so when he came back and we wanted to see it, they didn't give it to us. It, because, you know, Team Extreme Matt Hardy was what WWE made, and it's what WWE made money off of. And so that's what they were going to use. And I don't know, I just – I feel like kind of building off your point, if they were more open to approaching things like, you know, some of the other companies have been, then, you know, they would have ultimately been more successful with people like Matt Hardy and so far to date that Bobby Lashley. I think the closest thing that WWE's done to that was probably AJ Styles. That they allowed but to be really they just all they did was they let him keep his name. Yeah. Like like it's they basically they didn't change anything. They just said AJ Styles, all right, you're working for us now. Yep. Now, can you imagine if AJ Styles would have had a run with them instead of TNA and back then he was, you know, Mike blue Mike blue blooded American dude whatever like yeah. he would have come back like that and we wouldn't have gotten phenomenal AJ Styles and all of that and so you know I don't know they just 
they have a habit, a nasty habit, and by they I mean WWE, of assuming that what is done on their screen is going to take precedence over what's done elsewhere. And that's not always the case with wrestling fans. Wrestling fans respond no matter who's producing it. If it's good stuff, it's good stuff. That's 100%. I don't know. This, these three matches that we just spoke about, I'm really excited for. And I, I think that they're going to have so many different uh, opportunities after these matches are done going into SummerSlam. Because, you know, obviously SummerSlam is one of the biggest events of the year. And from Mania well, to this, – This year oh, especially with the way Mania had to go, SummerSlam exactly. was a big deal. Exactly. And I think this is – a, and people are, are saying this online too, and I, I didn't really understand it until I really, like, looked at it. This is WWE's grace period to test things without the crowd, live crowd at least. True. So, you know, you can test uh, Lashley in the main event right now. You can test uh, MVP being, you know, alongside him instead of Lana. And if it works online, it's probably going to work when the crowds are back. Yeah, no, I, I think you can get a real good feel for that in a controlled environment, definitely. Yeah. Lots of things that they can do, so – um, yeah, no, it's, and that's kind of a, that's a really interesting thought is to think that, you know, this is a, a, a experimentation period. Exactly. I mean, we see it being done with all the stuff with COVID-19 and now they have, you know, the plexiglass and now they're allowing some people in. And I, I made a comment on Twitter that this is the first time that WWE actually has a crowd that they can control who, who they cheer and boo for. That's true. <laughs> that's true. And even then it's not, it's not as loud as they want it to be. Yeah, I mean, I still heard people turning on Charlotte on Monday, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although I will say, underrated MVP of being in the crowd, Shotzi Black, or Shotzi Blackheart. Like, whenever you see her in the crowd, she is, like, super 100%, like, there. Like, I, into do, I do have to give it to, to Marina Shafir, too. Because she's usually on – she sits on the ramp. Like, uh, I saw her a few times on Monday Night Raw. Didn't she? She had, like, a beanie or something. You know, yeah. Yeah. Right. And yeah, she, I saw her too. she was dancing. She was doing Oscar's dance. She was booing. She was cheering. And like, I mean, this you know is what's, really cool because they're not playing their characters at ringside. They're just, they're there as fans. They, they are. And you bring up Shafir, which I think is kind of cool. Cause like from what I've seen of out of those women, Rousey, Baszler, Duke, and Shafir, Shafir is the one that has the most personality. Like, like that, yeah. like I've seen clips of her. She's just hilarious. Like, yeah. So um, it's cool to see that. I think she gets typecast and kind of lumped in with the rest of them as being these fearsome MMA veteran, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, no, that's one, that's one thought I had when I saw her. I was like, oh, look, it's Shafir. And for once, she's not like scowling at somebody. <laughs> and I saw Jasmine Duke there too. She was on the opposite side of the ramp and she had her hands up waving. So I know she had some surgery. Well, I, I still felt like she was better. more angry, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, man, I do want to appreciate you for taking the time out to uh, talk about these matches, kind of give your, your thoughts. And uh, it's, it's been a pleasure. And any last thoughts you have? Uh, no, man. Just I uh, want to thank you for the invitation. It was a pleasure to be here. I've uh, enjoyed watching the show the few times I've been able to catch it. So hopefully we can do this again. Um, for anyone listening, thanks for spending the time with us. I uh, just want to let you know if you wanted to catch my show, the Botch Finish podcast, you can follow us on Twitter. That's at Botch underscore finish. You can follow myself, Lopaki, at Rob Lopaki. Um, we do keep up weekly shows, a uh, wrestling blog, as well as a live YouTube channel that we're starting. So um, check it out. And there's a lot of, lot of great wrestling out there, a lot of great opinions to hear. And, uh, you know, we'd like to have you come through for some honest conversations about wrestling from people you'd want to watch wrestling with. Awesome, man. Wow, such great insight from Lopaki from the box finish. I want to thank him and also my other fellow panelists, the Ballard Club guy, for taking the time out to really give their great perspective on professional wrestling on the Angles WWE Backlash pre-show. It will not go unnoticed, and I hope to see them all down the road again on another pre-show. Now, before we end the show, I do want to talk about everything that went down tonight. I mean, we talked about all the matches, great perspective across the board from everyone. We had eight-time WWE Tag Team Champion, current WWE Tag Team Champion, Big E from the New Day, made a short cameo appearance on the angle. We had a fantastic down the show. But I did say on Twitter, I was gonna shout out some fans who retweeted my last post for my interview with Dave Chris, Impact Superstar Dave Chris. 
And those names are at Rutwick2304, at Alyssa MU0737-6311, at Rompy, uh, Rompy ba Balel, I think it is. Sorry if I mispronounce these, I'm trying my best. At Dork ISMSS, at Tom Mitchell, uh, at Newcom underscore Brett, at Caleb Wildland1, at Singh underscore Vineski, at AJM Fox7, at AD, uh, ADI10 underscore 7. Sorry if I mispronounced those names. But I want to thank you guys for retweeting my post with Dave from my interview with Dave Chris. Uh, and I'm just doing what I said I was going to. And I would uh, shout out everybody who uh, retweeted that post. I do want to keep you uh, updated with what's going on with the angle. There are more interviews coming your way. I mean, we just had some interviews uh, with Chris Van Vliet. Everybody knows who Chris Van Vliet is. One of the best uh, voices in professional wrestling today. Uh, we had Dave Chris, Impact Superstar. Dave Chris was just on the angle. And there's so many more to come. I'm excited for the future. And I'm just really excited for everything that's happening with the Angle Podcast. Now, it's such a great time going over the card for tonight for WWE Backlash. It's going to be one of the best ever. We have the greatest wrestling match ever going down. The Rated R Superstar in his first match back. Officially. First match. Uh, against the Viper, Randy Orton. This is going to be one of the greatest, if not the greatest wrestling match ever. Now, I really did have such a great time going over the card tonight. Talking to my fellow uh, analysts from the exclusive panel that I put together. I hope to do many more of these down the road. If you want to be a part of this, no big deal. Tweet me at the Angle Radio on Twitter, DM me, whatever, and we'll get you all scheduled up for the next WWE pay per view pre show. I want to start doing more pre shows going forward. We're going to be doing the NXT uh, pay per view pre shows, we're going to do AEW pay per view pre shows. The Angle is going to take over the world, and like always, it's all due to your help. So if you want to get involved, tweet me, DM me at the Angle Radio, and I'd be happy to set you up with the show. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you haven't already, like, subscribe down below. At the end of the video, comment your favorite part. If it was your uh, the cameo from Big E, if it was Lil Pocky's uh, from the Botch Finish, uh, his perspective, if it was the Ballot Club guy's perspective, or if it was just anything that I said, comment down below, like, and subscribe. Stay updated with the Angles activity right here on YouTube. This has been a blast. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. The Angle is bigger, badder, and better than ever. I like to say that all the time, and I always want to leave on a positive note. Thank you for loving pro wrestling. Thank you for staying involved with the Angle. We'll see you next time. The WWE Backlash pay-per-view because we're going to be live tweeting the entire event. So if you want to stay up to date with us, follow our tweets at The Angle Radio on Twitter and enjoy WWE Backlash. And for now, I'm your host, Joey Carney, and this has been The Angle's WWE Backlash pre-show. Enjoy. We'll see you next time.